Hello. Hi, Bye, girl. Allie. Oh, I'm hey. Go Hold on. All right. Let me fix my video here. Hello. Okay, on day back time. And then, how do you say "time so day"? That's uh, when you're cross eyes. Yeah, That's cross right. eyes. Yeah. And, uh, Charlie had back home in English. Uh, and go, and you, Charlie. Old uh un that he was his name. One time, read, read. Uh, what was his name? He was from Carnegie. He said, I said, how do you say Charlie and Q? He said, you mean Otakun? <laughs> you remember that, Dolores? Yeah, I remember his name. And that I don't, means know, what his, I don't know what his real common name was, but that's what people call him. I'm sure yeah. he had, he had an official legal name. <laughs> No I'm not like it. That's what people call him. But I like to say that Akunma or be That's a real so, real name. So what is it? Tok Akunma? Is that it? Tok Akunma too. Round dances be ok obey gun. Oak Obey is around. It's Grandma around. Dorothy. Huh? Monday inside the fall. Um, can you repeat that saying? I'm gonna try to write it in the chat for us learners that it, when you have your shoes on the wrong foot. Okay, listen. So, uh, unma. So, it's your shoes. And little children seem to do that around the age of two and three. They never get their boots on right. Oh, so did you say, so, uh, Un ma tail? Yeah, uh, you don't have to put the tail on there. Just put tot a kun ma. Tot a kun ma. Yeah. Shoes on the wrong side. <laughs> Is Shoes. that the way? Uh, Dolores. Hande. It's tot a kun ma. Is that right? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. I'm going to put it in the chat and then I, I got to try to put it into our modified McKenzie with the diacritic marks, but I put it phonetically for anyone who is curious. Uh, all obey, good. It's around it. Ak obey, good. Ak obey. It's just... Uh, I would just use it in terms with the round dance, but it's a circle. Ok obey is how they describe the the. Is it like a goon is oh, dance? So circle like dancing yeah. in a circle. Our old MCs used to say that. They call ok obey goon. Let's go ahead and round dance now. Oh, obey. Oh. And then one time your grandma Dolores told us uh, that one of the missionaries, she had a Kiowa name and she told us J.J. Methman's name. He was he was called the ant wear waist because she said he was skinny, he had a little waistline. 
And then his other name, what was her name? Kind of halfway. What was her name, Dolores? Your missionary. Her. The missionary. Which missionary? <laughs> From the, what how do they call your missionaries? Oh, from, uh, you're talking about Aim Deco. Yeah. Aim Deco. Aim Deco, huh? You do it this way or come this way. That was interesting to me because uh, the kind of names they would give them. We had a priest that they named the Tokatan. Let's see. He came from a long way. Anyway. Oh. Well, that's interesting. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. So we have uh, two of our mentors. Oh, and we have three mentors. There's Miss Velma. And then we have Alisanne, Ramon, and then we have George and Akima. So far, and Aunt Carolyn, Grandma, Dor Grandma D, is Aunt Carolyn with you? Excuse me, no, honey. Okay. Oh, Dolores and I are sitting with no technicians. <laughs> okay, well, we'll try to go easy then. <laughs> um, okay, well, um, I know we're still waiting for others to join in, but um, I guess we can go ahead and get started with our opening um, opening prayer. Uh, Grandma D, they don't say. ตอปานมันตอเลยเตอปานมันตอเลยเตอปานมันตอเลยเตอปานมันตอเลยเตอปานมันตอเลยเตอปานมันตอเลยเตอปานมันตอเลยเตอปานมันตอเลยเตอป
like translations or things that you're wondering, things like that before we get started. Okay. Um, so let's see, the other thing I wanted to see is another thing we wanted to do during our Wednesday sessions is take some time um, to share some updates um, from anyone who's uh, teaching a Kiowa class, whether it's in the community or at one of the schools, um, to just share some updates and things and also see if we have any um, questions for each other for other uh, Kiowa language teachers. So that's another um, thing. We started that last week and we all, whoever was on here, we just kind of took turns um, sharing some updates about how our classes are going and things that we're observing with the students and things like that. Um, so where would everyone like to start today? I can just go ahead and start and fill in a little bit about how our class is going over here in Anadarko. Oh, awesome. Get the bag. <clears throat> oh. um, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me. Well, uh, I must say, though, it's it's really nice to, to be back and joining back in. Uh, I think things have kind of gotten a little bit of like a routine, you know, type of thing for for at least for me and the classes. And um, of course the classes started August the 10th, but you know, I had to kind of settle into a routine um, and, you know, find, find that niche, you know, where you, you feel like you're, Oh, okay. You know, this is how this didn't work or this didn't work or this did work. And this is what I'm going to do. And, um, just kind of getting into like a predictable routine. Of course, I always feel behind, <laughs> but I'm sure that's going to always be that way for any teacher, no matter what they teach. But um, George keeps reminding me, remember, you're, you're a teacher, so you'll never really be caught up completely. <laughs> but what we've been doing is um, we, um, our class we began with uh, we talked about respect you know and the uh, what we call our Kiowa values and what it means to have respect with one another and, and as far as when we're learning our language and we're we're in our culture as Kiowas what do we what do how do we need to be you know in the classroom and in, in a setting. And so that's sort of the principles that I was working on with them and that I continue to uh, remind them about daily. Uh, you know, it would be the equivalent of rules in another classroom. Um, so that's really been going really good. We do things such as, you know, things like um, reminding one another, you know, we don't laugh at each other. We support each other. We our men, our men folks and our elders, you know, they, they take precedence, um, you know, cause there's a lot of things that a lot of our students that they don't know and they maybe we might take for granted that they do know and, and they don't. So just explicitly labeling and, um, you know, talking about these things. And so, you know, we don't laugh at each other when we're learning our language and even if we're trying to be friendly or and cute if it's cute we don't laugh you know either it's just but we you know also like mixed company and how we speak with males and females in the same room and that type of thing and, and we we also we're talking about cedaring um, um how the spirituality of our Kiowa people is is the foundation of who we are as Kiowas and how our language is built around all of these things. It's built into these things and they all go together. And so we, I was appreciative of the video that um, was made and it, it was including Cricket and Grandma Dorothy and 
um, Uncle Sonny and um, Cricket's husband about the cedaring um, because our students really enjoyed that. And I showed it to them and then um, George came and cedared them. And so we were learning phrases that we use in cedaring. And um, so I just wanted them to understand, you know, that, that cedar, cedar and our cedaring ceremony, how critical that is to us and our spirituality is, is the most important thing is who we are as Kiowas, you know? And so with all those things, the respect and then the, the spirituality, then we'll be able to proceed and start learning language and um, culture. And so right now we're into vowels. We're doing vowels and um, sort of just talking about the different sounds of Kiowa. So anyway, that's kind of an update. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's awesome. I love that. Um, I like uh, hearing how you That talk sounds about great, Ekima. Thank you. Oh. Oh. I liked how you talked about your expectations and your rules um, for the students. I think that's so important. Um, that's a uh, that's kind of a similar. I haven't translated them into Kiowa yet, but um, on the first day, we talked about our classroom expectations. And some of the students that I have, um, they participated in. So Weatherford, uh, I guess, hasn't had a Native American club in like a couple decades. And so um, we started up the Native American club again last year. And so some of the students that were in that, um, that club and are in my class, they remembered that our number one rule is respect. For our club members and so it was it was nice to kind of emphasize that with our class too is with our Native American language class is emphasizing respect so I love I love how you mentioned that and how you infuse the Kiowa values in there that's awesome I hope Um, they own the Babon, everyone. Um, but I was going to say there's no real update on the class for me, but I will say something that I found out for for any certified Kiowa language teacher that does not have a teaching certificate from the state of Oklahoma. Um, each school will require, um, or at some point they're going to require that six digit uh, number, or it might be a U number. Um, but if someone does not have a teaching certificate from the state, um, there is, I talked to Dr. Skinner, the director of world languages, and she says that um, uh, people in that situation can get a provisional certificate uh, for Native American languages. Uh, the process would just have to go through the um, world language department uh, there at the state. And also, too, it would need to be in coordination with the uh, teacher it's themselves the school that is hiring them as well as um, uh, information from the tribe on um, their teaching and whatnot there's more to it <clears throat> um, so but I will say for those of you who may not have a teaching certificate or um, in the future whenever we do credential more teachers that uh, let's say um, you know don't have that teaching certificate, that'd be the best thing to go ahead and um, let them know of that ahead of time. Uh, at, at least like if they plan on going into a high school or any school, I would say, um, you know, start the process a couple months before school starts. Um, that way you can get all your uh, paperwork filled in with the state department and make sure the tribe has enough time to, um, send in that paperwork uh, and so that the school is also on top of things. So that's just a bit of information that I had to share for that. Oh, uh -huh. that's awesome. Um, and Ramon, I know with the uh, World Languages Department at the state, doesn't the school, like the high school, for instance, would have to send in their requests for 
the code, whatever the the world like Native American language code. Is that are you right? talking about the OCAS code? Yeah, yeah, the class code to so it could be officially count as world language credit for the students. Right, they'll they'll still do that. It's just whenever the school, because I think sometimes, like the first or second month of each um, school year, and um, whenever it starts, that's when I guess accreditation comes up um, for the schools. So that's when they have to turn in like all their documents for their teachers, making sure that their teachers are certified, different things like that. Um, so and there's a different couple of ways that um, the process can be done. Um, because of how late we were entering into Carnegie, um, they could submit an application um, to make the Kiowa language teacher adjunct, but then that would have to be submitted to the local school board. Then it, once that is approved, then it has to be sent to the state school board for approval. Um, but they can't do that right now because school board meeting already happened and October 1st is their credentialing or accreditation date. So they have to uh, do something before then. Um, the And that is what Dr. Skinner had recommended. Um, but also, too, their ROA, or RAO, I think it is, um, the person in charge of their accreditation, did say that if, uh, if, if anything, they should be able to supply me with a U number or create uh, a U number for the... Um, for the teacher and that would work uh, for the rest of the school year, but making sure that the teacher is working on their certificate or their provisional certificate from uh, for Native American language. Oh, and is the uh, contact information the same on the uh, world language website? Is it still Dr. Skinner? Yes. Awesome. I think uh, Weatherford High School still has to uh, do that. I don't think they've done that yet. I've given them the information, but I don't think they've like gotten all their paperwork in yet. So I need to remind them. That's so cool. Um, thank you for those updates. Um, let's see. So I'll give a, a quick update. I know um, Ramon heard this update last week, but uh, Julia, since you're here, um, so I'm teaching uh, Kiowa at uh, Weatherford High School. This year we started um, early August, I think around uh, like the ninth or something, ninth and ninth or tenth, something like that. So yeah, it's been it's been a couple months almost, and it's really been exciting. I mean, the students are definitely growing on me and I'm like so excited by how much they're, um, how interested they are. So I have like about five Kiowas or Kiowa descendant, like, and then um, the majority are CNA. And then I have a handful that are non-native um, non in, and then I have two that are actually like fluent Spanish speakers. They're Hispanic and they didn't want to take Spanish language because they already know it. <laughs> they read and write fluently in Spanish. So they're taking Native American language as, you know, their their language. And it's been really interesting, like their perspective. Um, there are two siblings and uh, they have like, we've had a lot of discussions like with the class about um translations and you know like just how uh the pronunciation is same or different and how translations are different um between like english and kiowa and kiowa and spanish and spanish and english so that's been really interesting um but how what i did is basically um my curriculum is using the um the conversational um kind of uh, materials that uh, we've been, we've used basically for level one. Um, and so I've split it up into units. And this semester we're work we have four units that we're working in. And the first one was all like get getting started, like with learning 
um, the sounds of Kiowa, learning the help phrases and getting used to and familiar with using the help phrases in different situations. And how I kind of started the classes, I really wanted them to understand like why it's important uh, for them, like wh why the language matters to them, even if they're not Kiowa. And so we taught, we first started off with like learning about endangered languages, what that means, and then language revitalization and what that means. And then getting into like our languages here in Oklahoma and then getting into Kiowa and the history of our language revitalization. And so basically I've told the students in my class and I have them, let's see, mostly a lot of freshmen and sophomores, uh, but there are some juniors in there. Um, and a couple seniors, and they um, basically really, I've told them they, they should see themselves as now they're a part of language revitalization, just by taking the class, like they're a part of language revitalization. And so, um, and then each uh, unit, they have to do, um, so in the Oklahoma World Language Standards, um, for proficiency for novice, um, there's, uh, we have to do integrated performance assessments. And so I have, um, they have to do a interpretive task, an interpersonal task and a presentational task in the language, um, each unit. So that those are kind of like, I guess they're like little exams for the unit to like, so I can assess their proficiency. And then they have weekly quizzes where they like quit, I quiz them on just like hearing their pronunciation and translations of things. Um, and the cool thing is, and I mentioned this last week, is we use our learning management system is uh, Schoology. And on Schoology, I can design quizzes and, that require um, audio recording. And so we're really uh, blessed at Weatherford High School. All the students are issued a Chromebook to use for the year. So they have their own Chromebooks. And so they bring their Chrome and every single class like has their classwork and homework and everything using Schoology. And so anyway, for, for my class, they bring the Chromebooks and on their quizzes, they uh, take their quiz and they have to pronounce um, and say different things in Kiowa. And then so I can hear the audio and then I can give them feedback and make a recording of how they should be pronouncing it if I need to correct, correct their pronunciation. <laughs> That's been really... Uh, interesting to kind of be able to have that as a tool um so anyway that's that's what we're that's what we've been doing um at weatherford for the first unit and then we're just finishing up the second unit and it was on kiowa greetings and kiowa farewells and so now we've gotten into like the conversations and so this is the third week or fourth week of doing conversations and it's been pretty really exciting to like see the students using the language with each other and you know just doing like hearing their pronunciation evolve and i'm going to be like video recording them and i told them that my elders my mentors want to see them um how they're pronouncing things and so i can't wait to show you all a video of them because i'm like super excited by how interested and engaged they all are um so that's that's my little update Oh, <laughs> Oh, hey, I see uh, Cricket joined us and Courtney and I see Alisanne. Welcome. Um, we were just going around giving some quick updates on our uh, different classes and things. Um, and then I had asked if anyone has any questions. Um, David has a question in the chat, but um, do we want to go finish up giving updates on our Kiowa language classes for anyone who is teaching? Hyundai, Hyundai, and um, inside the or Hyundai, yeah, Hyundai, Hyundai, inside the or Hyundai, Hyundai. Um, I have a question for all the teachers. Um, because I'm not a teacher. Uh. I mean, I'm certified, but I'm not actually in the classes. Um, what is y'all's end um, goal? 
like with students and what is it y'all hope to achieve by the end of the year, like their progress? Um, that mm -hmm. I find that really interesting. Oh, good question, Alison. I'll give um, mine from Weatherford High School. So for two years of a world language in Oklahoma, um, at a high school level, after two years, the student should be at a novice high level. So they should almost be at intermediate proficiency. And that's after two years. And so for me in this first year, my goal is to get them from zero to novice mid. And so all of my proficiency, like all my quizzes and the tasks, all these integrated performance assessments they have to do using the language, I'm assessing them at the novice mid um, proficiency standards. And um, and then, you know, next year, if, you know, if we if they take a level two, then that would get them from novice mid to novice high at the end of that year. So that's that's my goal. That's how I'm set up. Um, I don't know if anyone else wants to share their goals. Okay, on mine, um, for Anadarko, I was, <laughs> I uh, also agree with Melody on that as far as I as far as the the novice and you know where the State Department has us for world languages, stop. And um, <clears throat> so my uh, end goal for the year is having them um, be at a place where they're comfortable with conversation, as far as. Um, survival skills and I mean um what do you call those it's not survival right um help phrases I really like those because I feel like those facilitate conversation and so um also mostly though I'm really really trying to work with them on understanding the tonal aspect of our language and so because that's that's critical and I think that's um, that's something that, you know, in the long run for, for me and our students here, that's our goal in the long run is for them to identify the, dif the differences in our tone and how critical that is to Kiowa pronunciation and uh, using that to be able to um, do those uh, conversational skills such as using help phrases and then using the help phrases in conversation to link to facilitate deeper conversation and also with introductions family kinship terms and that type of thing so yeah <laughs> i have a lot of end goals <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> oh thank you uh, i I'd say on top of that, it's just, <clears throat> I think I remember hearing about how level, our level one will eventually change to level zero. Um, and I think that's where I'd kind of, now I don't know if that's the end of, end of year one or year two, but to that degree, them being able to kind of take a proficiency test a little bit. So, and maybe even being designated that like level one, level zero or something where it's that novice. Omaha. Oh. Oh. oh, I really like that. Yeah. You know, what's kind of funny Um, so far, the students that have the best pronunciation. Uh, well, there are two Kiowa students that I can tell have heard Kiowa a lot. So they are very familiar with our different sounds. But the two students, the two Spanish speaker students have like really awesome pronunciation. It's it's just kind of like mind blowing to me because I'm just like, I've never thought about that. Like how someone coming in with like their their first language was a totally different language than English, you know, and learning Kiowa. So it, they seem to be picking up the language way faster than the other students. So that's been kind of interesting to see, but. I like, I like how you mentioned that, Ramon.
That's a good question, Alison. Um, let's see. Cricket, did you want to share any updates or did you have any responses for um, Alice Allen's question? No, that was an amazing question um, because it really made me think. And uh, I think like for the community class, because we have people just drop in and then of course mine is hybrid. So I feel like I'm, you know, I literally am running two classes at the same time. <laughs> Um, that I, I feel I have to do, uh, like really like intro basic stuff, but then also try to give something that's a little bit harder, um, and more advanced for people that have, you know, been coming for several years and have caught on or people that have taken class, um, at OU and are more advanced. And so it's like I have all levels in the community class. And I know that elders understand this as they as they've taught over the years um, that in the community that you have people just coming in and then you have people that have gotten more advanced. And so um, uh, I think for me, it's trying to find something to engage all those different levels um and try to keep everybody interested in continuing on and i think that's my the main goal i have for community class and and if i were teaching an in classroom class uh that you know it's mandatory they make a grade they have to study that kind of stuff um then it's i think the main thing is in any class is wanting them to continue and learn more and giving them that desire to uh, wanting to seek out more, even after they've learned what they, what they could learn in the class and, uh, and wanting them to go out and hopefully they get that desire to go out and, and search for more uh, learning on their own of Kiowa and more understanding. Oh, oh. Uh, let's see. Any other class updates? <laughs> I'm so excited that we have uh, Carnegie, Anadarko, and Weatherford High Schools represented here today. Super exciting. <laughs> Um, as far as the community class, I was trying to jump back on and <laughs> I couldn't find the button. It popped away for a minute, but um, I had it muted. Our community class in, kind of goes along with what Cricket was saying too. Um, you know, it is, it is a challenge. It's a wonderful challenge. I love it. I love, I love that class. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, they come and go, you know, so, you know, it is, it is a challenge sometimes to try to, you know, make sure that everyone's on the same page, but, but it's, it's fun, you know, the people have fun, <laughs> but, um, we've, we've been, uh, working on the, um, some of the, um, the, gosh, I'm sorry, the lessons starting, you know, we're at one and two and just kind of building on those and just also using help phrases. But we also reserve some time to translate uh, our Kiwa hymns. And <clears throat> that's really going very, very well. Um, we color code for them and we play the songs and we sing. But uh, then we try to dissect the hymns as much as we can. And our, my end goal for that is, is helping, you know, helping them to the community class, regardless of their age. Of course, you know, at the high school, I've got, you know, um, sophomores and juniors, freshmen, sophomores, and, and a couple of juniors. But at the community class, you know, they could be 
a little girl came the other day. She was like four, I think. And then we had like a, you know, we have elders that drop in too. So it's a range. Just making sure that we, you know, we are talking about what we're singing about. We talk about it and that we know exactly what it is we're singing about. So my end goal for that is just making sure that um, we can translate our hymns and that we we can know what they mean and and um we also we also try to my end goal is what we're also trying to do as far as looking at um how the hymns look in the modified parker mckenzie uh, system versus how you know when they're written you know uh phonetically so my end goal is to make sure that you know they're they're as comfortable as possible seeing those so anyway that's just one thing that she's fine that's just one thing you know that we're 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 striving for in our class a community class and um my end goal too is is for the wide range of the learners to be comfortable with each other so the little ones and we have 12 year olds at times we have 11 year olds we had some six year olds and we had elders adults um is that helping the families understand that that the children even though it might seem like they're not listening because maybe they're they're you know they're either they're they're, they're moving around or they're talking or whatever they're doing they can still hear what we're talking about and they're they're um processing it because that's what my end goal is to help them understand that you know they may not sit down and receive explicit instruction because they're younger or they're little, but there's, that's how they're learning. And so that's why we need to keep using that language and that the hymns and all these things around them, because that's how our, um, you know, our Kiowa ancestors learned, you know, they didn't, they, they, they listened and they heard it. And so anyway, that's my angle for the community class. More conversation. <laughs> so I like that about the kids. Oh, that's awesome. It sounds like, I mean, with so, such a variety, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity there that you have. So that's really exciting to get families interested. And then, you know, once they notice that the kids are picking it up, like they might get inspired to, you know, use it more in, in their home and in their life. So that's awesome. And I know that's always a challenge when you're trying to like accommodate multiple age groups at the same time. <laughs> so that's awesome that you're tackling that. Paul. Um, let's see. Uh, Grandma Dorothy uh, David has a question. David Pullman. Um, his mic isn't working, um, but he wanted to ask uh okay let's see hold on i'm gonna copy it and put it in the chat let's see if we can uh he wants to know how to say this correctly or appropriately um let's see hi all day zongunma hi all day zongunma that's what you mean david I think I think I think he's doing that high yeah name koi bato lake e ta. That's what it says. Hi remember in that song? He's saying he's saying Haya Alde Zong Gunmo. I said that earlier. Oh when you have when you have two and three things to do at the same time and you're trying to do it. Um I verified it with, I didn't verify it, but Dolores and I talked about it earlier. When you're doing that and you're so busy that you're trying to tend to everything at the same time and your head is going back and forth. And I said, hi, y'all, the zone good, ma. It's like an animal when you're trying to grab something to eat or something. Your head is going all over. Zone good, ma. 
I was answering oh. somebody and I was trying to do something else at the same time. It's just a slang word. Oh. Come in and find a seat. <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> I'm biting in every direction. That's just, a, that's just a slang. I'm so busy. And at Dolores. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. awesome. I'm going to have to use that, yeah. especially when there's like a million kids asking me questions at the same time. <laughs> if, if, your, if your class is unruly at the same time and you're trying to tend to something and someone comes in and you can't answer, I'm going to just say, have a seat. Hey, <laughs> oh. So, huh? That's a good one. Got it, David? I think his mic doesn't work. Yeah. yeah, his his mic doesn't work, but uh, David, oh, he says ha in the chat. <laughs> and then uh, there's another question here, which I think of as Velma, you um, noticed his second uh, chat message. He says in that that rhyme or that, what what do we call it? That little saying or song. Um, Goi batole name e da. Oh, uh, no, it's a butterfly. It says, I don't know why, that's a kind of uh, senseless oh, uh, sentence, but Kali, yeah, I don't know that song. When you get to Tante Satan and when I bring grandma the guts of the uh, buffalo, let's see, she's going to knock over the baby buffalo she's been tracking, and she says, yeah, Alba, yeah, Honde Alba. Yeah, they albo. Oh, you get think to go higher name core, but to lake eat to tante say time not going to know. Yeah, oh, Tommy, to yeah, oh, Tommy, to it says I'm tracking this baby buffalo for quite a ways, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna pretty soon I'm gonna catch him by the ears and the horns and I'm gonna throw him down. And she's saying, Yan koi batoli kita. Koi batoli if you're trans if you're if you if you're saying it in English, if you're translating it, koi batoli is a butterfly. And kito uh -huh. means I'm throwing it. And koi batoli kita. And then taunt they say tanya when I haul all of these guts to grandma, she'll be able yeah. to suck on them, get all tummy because she has no teeth. And it's just a little girl tracking a buffalo. Oh wow. Know. And oh. I was and I was wondering why they would say Hayanin Koi Bato Lake Eta. Because why would she be throwing, I'm going to throw him like a butterfly. Hmm. And that was just a private, I was asking people, surely there's another word comparable to butterfly, some animal or something. I haven't quite figured it out yet. But that's the way the song is. Hmm. If, if I get it uh, translated, I'll tell you. Hmm. That's all. I've been translating nursery rhymes and little songs like that. I like that. That's awesome. So, That's so the question, song. I think the question that uh, David was wondering is, could you substitute another animal word in place instead of saying "goi bato"? Like, like, is it trying to say like I'm gonna <laughs> throw him like a I don't know like a something? Like a dog or like a horse. Yeah. <laughs> then he must have heard me say that because I'm trying. That's what I'm trying. And I can't fit another. Uh, like you uh, with rodeo people nowadays, they call it bulldogging. You know how they oh. catch a horse on a. They caught a. They jump off the horse and grab the steer by the, the, the horns and bulldog him. Oh, and I can't, you know, huh. you can't, you can't throw a butterfly like that. 
So <laughs> someone, somebody miscalculated and put the wrong word in there. So, and far be it for me to correct anybody's kaiwa. I don't do that. But I'm trying to translate it to see what they could have used. Oh, I would never miscon say somebody done it wrong. No. We just try to correct. I mean, see what was possible. Thank you, David. Hey, uh, God, you got to them when I, if I ever find a translation. Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to um make a note of that. And I know we were working on a translation of that song a, a while back, a couple of years ago, I think. But um, I'm going to find our notes from that and see if uh, we had any like a breakdown, like a word breakdown or. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, I'll have to look that up and I'll uh, I'll email it, uh, David, if, if I come across those notes or I'll I'll share it in uh, the drive in Google Drive. That, that's bothered me half of my life. I've heard that since I was a little child. <laughs> so someday we'll get it translated before. <clears throat> Think um, about data though when we do Anna Dolores, I even asked her. I don't know. I don't know any of those. I don't know. I'm not that good at Kiowa. I don't know all the like I told you before, I don't know anything about that much about Kiowa stories. I told said that a long time ago, years ago when I started with this program. I'm lacking in the stories because my my parents were too busy working. They didn't tell me, and I wasn't around. My both of my maternal grandparents were gone, and my paternal grandparents that didn't live nearby. I didn't spend that much time with them. So, and while I'm while I'm speaking, talking, or whatever, uh, I saw an article. In this morning's uh, Norman transcript, and it was this morning, so I forgot most of it. I tried to find it while everybody's talking, but it tells about how I don't know what the organization is, but they're trying to <clears throat> collect oral history about boarding schools, and and yeah, uh, seen it. yeah. and uh, so uh, I was thinking about. Uh, that would be interesting if you would ask your elders or something in, in connection with your classes to see what uh, what a frontier education was for Kiowa people, all Native Americans actually. And and all the funny stories are, I mean, that I've heard from Rainy Mountain, who was the way they uh, misunderstood or didn't understand when the teacher or the employee was giving them direction. And and so uh, those were, to me, happy stories, the funny stories that they told on each other. And like uh, Dorothy's always said, her mother went to the Rainy Mountain and didn't have any really bad experiences. So, but this uh, group, I can't remember who it is or who's funding it, but it's... it's uh, it's in this morning's uh, Norman transcript. I tried to find it, but I don't know where it is. And I can't remember that well. But I thought uh, that that would be good for, I would encourage all of you young ones to, if you have an elder that, who went to a boarding school, uh, their experiences. And then you might relate that to your students, how they had to learn. English, like they're they're learning Kiowa, was the other way around. They they knew Kiowa. They were trying to learn English, and then and your students are are know English or trying to learn Kiowa, and there are a lot of funny stories that I've heard too. That that's mostly in my experience listening or hearing about Kiowa people who went to Rainy Man and other boarding schools. And they were they just told the funny stories about themselves, and they remember I remember hearing the men sitting around laughing, the women, older women, telling uh, 
Well, um, when they start talking about Rainy Mountain, then they start telling these funny stories. And then we have this recording, the Kiowa Culture Program. You recall some of them we played. Uh, they told their experiences at Rainy Mountain. Oh. Yeah, they and that. I can't remember the title, but, but they they talked about it. And uh, mm -hmm. I remember, I think it was uh, uh, Margaret Dankoff. She always had good stories. Uh, she didn't understand what teacher wanted. And she said, teacher started uh, after her. And she told her it was difficult for her to learn, very difficult for her to learn. The other, her her friends, girls her ages, seemed to pick it up and do a better job and said it was very difficult for her to, to uh, she thought, but this told a story how she didn't understand what her teacher wanted. And then another, Isabel too, had to tell another funny story. And so, uh, those are, we have those in the Kawa culture program. But I'm just, I just, I'm just bringing this up because there is a group and whatever it is that I don't remember the organization or who is funding it, but they're, they're going to ask uh, those, all the Native Americans who have, uh, want to contribute and tell their stories about boarding schools, maybe their grandparents went or they, they had experiences and this was just and so I'm saying that all that comes about with uh, uh, when it first started with the Secretary of Interior went around and got testimony about how <clears throat> the boarding school uh, the, the children were treated at school you remember all of you remember that well this is uh Along that line, and they're going. It's a going to be a, a well. It's mostly a experiences. You don't have to ride. They're going around doing a, collecting a, stories, not necessarily reading, but just oral history. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh well, yeah. I was just thought. Well, maybe. Those of you would you would ask elders, and anyway, incorporate it with your your uh, you're talking about. Uh, you bring culture in. You know, you could bring in. You know how, Kai was then always speak English, and they 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 had, went to school, of course, and had had to learn English, just like they don't have to learn Kiowa today. But they chose to to, to uh, take Kiowa in school, and so anyway, that's what. I, so when I saw that article, I thought about that. If you could, you know, at some point to just uh, tell your students about that. And I'll tell you this: I'm a product of an Indian school and a Catholic boarding school, also. I was never mistreated. I told the Secretary of the Interior at Riverside. I said, I was never touched. And if I seen anybody that was, I would have told what was wrong with those people. If it happened, it happened north of here. It did not happen at Riverside. And no, there's no mass graves anywhere around here. I've grown up being observant. I've seen how people were raised, and I know what the people that are the products are. I know who they are. And we're the last generation that knows that, Dolores. Otherwise, the rest is just going to be a, I grew up like this and stuff like that. I see it happening already. I name Ohota. Ohota means when you make things up about your past. I know. I remember things, and I'm still clear-headed enough to know that I never once got hit at Riverside. We talked Kiowa. I can name part of the people that are still alive that remember that. And how can they stand and testify 
I would be afraid because it's better to tell the truth than to go and make something up. I was treated, I was treated low, lowly by women that did not go to government school. On the same token, I learned more from my my uh, educators and some of the ones that did not go. Now, I consider myself pretty darn lucky that we had nice people that worked there. I worked there full time also. Yes, I worked at a government school for 25 years and left there and then went back and under Mr. Noel, I was the school grandmother. And I still never seen anything like that. Nobody got here, not here, huh? -uh. And not at St. Patrick's. I had fine people that went to school there that would quote me if they were alive. It's all the Palmers and the people that we all know that are graduates from both places. How dare somebody put words in their mouth? And they're, they're not the ones that testified. It's the younger ones. And if you're going to do that, don't be doing that when there's some of us that can dispute it. I hope. Grandma D and Grandma Dorothy, um, thank y'all for sharing that um, because actually what we're doing um, next week in our class is we're having a, um, <clears throat> we're doing <clears throat> a tribute, you know, to the right, to the boarding schools, the, the children who went there and the families. And um, of course, you know, those that did go through things. Um, and uh I know that the one of the programs, uh, the Kiowa, um, I believe it's the, uh, what is it called the Head Start? They have that Phi Gul Hold the Bot Do. Uh, we wear orange shirts, and um, we're going to be talking about that phrase next week, where. We wear orange to commemorate those boarding schools, uh, students, children, and their families, and um, Native American residential schools um, day, I guess. But we're doing it on the 29th on Friday, next Friday, because they're, you know, it's on a Saturday, the 30th is orange shirt day. Um, anyway, we're going to talk about that phrase. We wear orange shirts and um, I told the students yesterday if they had anybody in their family, you know, that went to boarding school or anywhere, any boarding school, anywhere. Um, if they, you know, I thought they could bring pictures or at least just get the names. And so bringing that in and talking to them about the different experiences that our people had, our Kiowa people, especially that they had in the boarding schools. But uh, I kind of stopped there because um, we have homecoming week this week, so it's been kind of a <laughs> crazy week, but um, I was uh, just actually going to start talking about bringing in somebody, you know, like you said, Grandma D, to talk to the students and, and bring in, you know, the elder, uh, an elder to talk with them. So I'm glad you brought that up because that's actually what we're doing next week. Some of what we're doing next week. But um, yeah, they're going to be wearing orange. Friday. It sounds good. Just uh, there's an article that I answered to on the same subject two years ago, but it was put out by a magazine that nobody reads. It's just a Catholic paper from St. Gregory's. And then I've done a bit of big article on that my experience from bottom to the top. And I told her they cut my hair, but they done that for everybody, to everybody. I didn't have long flowing black hair, but they cut our hair that was for other purposes, not just for that. To take your spirituality away. No, it was just for cleanliness purpose. Velma can talk on that. She's an educator for, what, 40 years on her reservation. 
And she also went to Riverside. There's a bunch of us that are products from out there. I never did get hit. I haven't ever been hit in my life. Except by my grandchild. <clears throat> Just standing there in the open telling some stories that should have been told 50 years ago if it happened to them. Around here, I mean, I'm not talking about the North. I know nothing about them. But we visited Concho on a daily basis and also Fort Sale Indian School, St. Patrick's. We were all raised, just about all of us, and I guess it was a stigmata to be from an Indian school. But I grew up happy out there. I just didn't enjoy it. We were all Kiowas, and they had manners. Oh. I didn't mean to, but I just keep getting, and people lose interest in me when I say, no, I was treated good. <laughs> Not good. I wasn't a babe I, all day much on out there or nothing, but I was treated fine. Oh, well, that's good information to know. Uh, and let's see, Hyundai. After we're gone, who's going to take up for our poor little schools? Oh. Uh, let's see. Oh, Ramon had to had to um, get off here. Um, do we want to do some uh, conversational practice? Ah. Uh. Okay. Let me. Um, let's use lesson uh, two because that's got the greetings and the farewells in the conversations. Um, I emailed both of them out. Um, but let me. Let me find the file so I can pull it up on the screen. Let's see. Okay. Lesson two. All right. This might be familiar. Okay, let me know when you can see my screen. I can see it. What is farewells about? This is uh, about um, how do you, I know that we don't have a word for goodbye, but how do you, uh, like, I guess, what's the equivalent of saying goodbye to someone if you're, like, leaving or going off or something? So that's what uh, this lesson covers. And so these are the uh, target questions and phrases and then the responses. So this is what we practiced last spring. Um, so yeah. we- Melody, okay. Melody and Cricket. Y'all remember, uh, remember when we got, uh, they said there was no such word as I love you. Well, uh -huh. on, those, on those tapes, on the tapes from uh, Dolores's, uh, Father's era, Lucy Somte, and several people in there. If you backtrack, they were saying "goat damn do." Then I heard uh -huh. that all my life. I love you. Uh huh. So Kaiwa also has "I love you." It's just not "I like you." Um, I'm all fatal do. It's "I like you." 
God mm -hmm. gave that means to hold you close to my heart. Oh. And I knew that was there. I heard Lucy say it. I heard my own folks say it. And we even got a no on that from some people. When you're oh. hearing something from Dolores, she comes from one of the greatest speakers in our tribe. And that era, they talked it flawlessly. And we learned from them. So I'm willing, I told Dolores earlier, we come with the the older ones where we're how you're going to learn it or it's how we learned it from our elders. And I appreciate people not trying, the younger ones trying to correct us. <laughs> I wouldn't have dreamed of correcting any of our elders. Oh. Mm -hmm. We shook hands with them and sat down and listened. That's one of the the Kiowa ways, respect. Yeah, Oh. My own children get these speeches when they upset me. Uh. 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 Um, let's see. Okay, so these are the target phrases. And then the way the lesson set up is this is the, the section. It follows the same format as the ones that Dane used and Grandma Marthanel, they use for the OU Kiowa language class. And so we have vocabulary and grammar breakdown here. And then these are the translations, the literal translation and then the free translation. Oh, and I wanted to mention this. Oh, I know Ramon had to jump off, but uh, Julia, I mentioned this uh, last week um, with uh, my students at the at Weatherford High School. Um, there for the units, the lessons that we're focusing on, like for instance, our our unit two is less basically lessons one and two of um this from from using these. So I basically print these handouts off and they get a copy for their notebooks. And the their these are their study materials that they have to reference and things as they're learning. Um so kind of come in handy that way and then some of the kids they like cutting out these little note cards they have little reflection journals that they write in like little composition books for my bell ringers and stuff that they have and some of them take cut these out and they glue them and make little phrases in their little journals um okay let me zoom out just a little bit okay so oh. here's the conversation practice so, uh, which one do we want to do? Option one or option two? Uh, start. I'm going to start with one. Oh, okay. Uh, let, let me look at uh, who, who we got here. Um, okay, for the learners, we have uh, Cricket, myself, Allison, Courtney. Um, David, I think your mic is still messed up, huh? Um, and then George and Akuma. So we'll just kind of take turns. Um, so I'll go with the first one I see on the list. I see Cricket. Cricket. Oh, hey, do you hear uh, me? Oh, oh. <laughs> am I am I on? I can't see my little speaker being on. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Can hear you. Right. Do you want to be uh, A or B? Um, I can be A. Oh. Okay. Uh, cool. Okay. Hyundai owned a and son. Oh. I'm idle. Hyundai owned a and off day. No, it's idle. I own time. I don't know that one. Oh, I'm Otto. 
Okay. 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 Hey, guy, I'm oi bon to. Uh, cricket, so go ahead, you pick someone else. Okay. Um, let me see who's on here. The next person I see is uh, Carolyn on? No, she's not. Okay. Uh, Akima. Are you on still? Oh, thank okay. you for calling me a chemo. <laughs> uh, it's I easy when you have it written up there. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Um, so does she do the top part and then I do the bottom part? Is that how we're going to do that? Oh, no, yeah. Um, could, since you got to, you got to start with it. Yeah. Let's give her a chance to do the other part. Okay. okay. Um. Wait, what? Okay. So I think you'll Do start. I see it? Yes. I pause. start. Pause. Oh. Okay. Pause. 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 This one I'm not used to. Um. A uh, on ta. A uh, on ta. Be good ta. Okay, where are you? Um, ha. Honde on de aim oi bon. Okay. Is that right? Okay. So that other one was, ah. Uh, Take care of yourself. No. Yeah. And then the other response. one. Oh, I'm glad. Uh, so I'd say for me, that second line for speaker B is yes. um, me, oh. not auto. And then I own time. Huh. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Huh. Okay. Not auto. Uh, um, and then they uh. thought. Okay. Um ha um adl. That's good. This is good because it helps me get the na adl and um adl straightened out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Did you um, want to pick somebody? Hey on. Oh, oh, sorry. Hey guy, I'm oi bon ta. Ha. Hey guy, I'm oi bon ta. Ha. Okay. Now do I pick somebody? Ha. We okay. Um in, I'm going to pick, um, I don't know, I guess I shall pick, um, who's on, I'm trying to see, Cor um, um, Alice Ann. Oh, I'm here. <clears throat> now, um, I, I wrote these out and translated them, but I used not so. Is that still okay? Yes. Oh. <laughs> No, I'll or not. Okay. okay. Um, let's see. So, do I go first since she went first last time? Uh, yes. Oh. Yes. Honde on day and on. Ha. Um, I'll. Hande on day and ah day, or am I saying the K right? Hande on day and ka day. Ah. Ha. Oh, my response. No, I I own ta. Be good day ta. Ha. 
am al am al hega em oi pon da ha hega em oi pon da yay so oh, ha huh. that's fun <laughs> It makes you think, <laughs> innit? Yeah. I know it's fun. And I, I like challenging myself to use the the tsal and not the al. Because mm -hmm. I'm not used to using the tsal. Mm -hmm. I just need to make sure I get the na and the um. <laughs> oh correct. Hey, George has a um George has a a, a clue that he uses and it, it has it has completely shown me how to not confuse those okay um tell him hey hey tell him george <laughs> he's right here it's, it's just, it works though it's just a little mental trick just for myself it's nothing really mm -hmm. that okay. spectacular but with the okay. naal and the mm -hmm. naamal for me i just connect it or associate the the end that starts with the naal mm -hmm. that's that in the alphabet that's a letter n and that's right next to the letter m which I, I associate with me. So no okay. is me. So that's just how I, for me, it makes it easy for me. N and okay. M are right. Yeah, it works for me. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. AL is like also. Uh-huh. And the I'm idle and I'm tall is territorial. You know, whoever you just, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. area they're from. Ah. Uh. Aho, George. Oh. Sorry, I threw you in there, but it helps. Oh, do I pick someone or? Uh, Alisanne, she picked someone, right? Oh, I, um, I will pick, um, well, I didn't know George was on, so I was going to go pick, um, Courtney, um, I, I I didn't know he was here, so I'm gonna pick Courtney because that's who I was first gonna go. Is she still here? Oh, hi, Courtney. Hello. <clears throat> Good to hear you all this evening. Let's see. So I'm going first. Oh. Okay. Hande on the aim son. Ha. I'm all. Hande on the aim cote. Ha. Not all. I on ha. Be good they thought. Ha. I'm all. Hega em oi bonto. Ha. Hega em oi bonto. So, uh, let's see. Uh, George, I think. It's on. It's not muted. Okay. Okay. Oh. Well, want me to go first or you go second? Yeah, you go first. Yeah. I'll go second. Okay. Hande on the end song. Ah, I'm out of. Hande on the end. Ah, they. Ah, not so a on time. Be good, they thought. Ha, I'm sorry. He got him oi bonto. Ha, he got him oi bonto. Oh. So do I pick? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Uh, guess we'll go with cricket. Okay. I, I just oh, went out. I think Melody, I think we've already gone oh. around. If you pick Melody, then she'll get to go first. Okay, go with Melody. <laughs> Are you ready? Oh. Sorry, I had to find the mute. 
<laughs> oh, that's not. Okay. Huh? Oh, am I am I speaker eight or? I think oh, I don't you're, know. You're, you're, you're you start out, right? Okay, okay. So that way, uh, George, you can do speaker B. Okay. All right. Ah, uh, cool. On the on the in sun. Oh, I'm out. Oh, on the on the in ah they. No, on time. Oh, get I yeah. They good they thought. Oh, I'm out. Oh, he got him oil bomb Oh, he got him oil bomb Oh, Oh, accomplished. Sam I was. I was gonna say, can you understand us now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I was worried about that. I was, I'm out of practice, so I was hoping I was, I was clear and able to be understood. Yeah, let's go. I do. I am. I will tell you. I got but don't run. Um. Oh. Um. What an impression. What. Put him on time, Lord. Oh, I'm proud. <laughs> yeah, well, that that that's how we, that's how we know it's working, right? <laughs> you can understand us. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Yeah, make this Melody. Oh, um, may I ask a question of the elders, mentors? Oh. Um, I didn't have this. I knew I had some questions earlier when you asked for questions at the earlier opening, but I knew I had some, but I just didn't know what they were because I have so many. <laughs> but um, I wanted to ask: Is there a particular phrase? Um, for telling some somebody or people that you missed, you missed them, you missed seeing them, you know, not not so much, you know, it's good to see you, or not so much like I'm lonesome for you, but but you know, I guess it would more be like I've been, I've been lonesome for you or something, you know. Is there anything like that? Hega hon tongo and boma honde onde. I have not seen you in a long time. It's good honde onde. What else? Honde onde. And hega tonga tongo is long time. And boma, I have not seen you in a long time. Hunde on day and bone and hug them. Oh, Grandma Dorothy, is God. that like that? Is that like that phrase? That one phrase that's in our lesson? Uh, yeah, the tonga honey bomb. It's in the greeting, yes, it's in the greetings, huh? Yeah, that's what we were just looking at. So that's what you could use for. You know, because that's how I feel about all of y'all right now. And I think no. I, I saw Cricket last in March and I was like, I missed you. <laughs> I said, how do I say that in Kiowa? Oh. <laughs> I miss y'all, all of y'all. I miss seeing y'all. <laughs> oh. would, would we say, Oi, Tonga, Hamba. Or you could say something. Hane Boma. Yeah, honey, boma, honey, all day. Or you could say, I can't hear time, honey, all day, and boom. 
I'm not lonesome anymore. I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Did you say and I can't hear Tom. Yeah. Honey Boma. Yes. It said, can't hear Tom. I say, I always get lonely. Honey on the embo. And I feel it right now. Honey on the bubble. Oh. I've heard. On the Japon coat. So, on the on the Japon coat. If they oh. see it, they say, you're hard to spend along. It just means that Japon coat, that's, that's, we don't see you that often. It's, goat is uh, something that's difficult. So, we don't see you. I've heard that. <laughs> Did they have you, Dorothy? Yes, yes. It's old Iowa. Uh-huh. The bon coat. Yeah, it's been a long time I haven't seen you. The bon coat. Yeah. And what yeah. was the one before that? Anna Kahi. Anna Kahi, Tama. Or you, if that means I get lonesome. But then Anna Kahi, Guya, is mean when... Oh, my loneliness is gone, you know, Hyundai on day. But it's Hyundai on day that makes me cry when I see you. you tell your brother-in-law, Sopol, I haven't seen you in a long time. That means <laughs> you little Sopol, I haven't seen you in a long time. Okay. For brother. Uh, yeah. And what was that? My loneliness is gone. What was that one? Can he go? Yeah, Hannah, can he go? Yeah. Are you Hana, saying Han? Han, yeah. like Han, like all gone, no more? Hannah? Dealers? Hannah. Hannah, can he go? Yeah. Yes. My loneliness is gone. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. love that. Yeah. Can he go? Yeah. Okay. Hana Guya. I there's a Native American church song. And it, when you sing that, the words to part of it, I'm not gonna sing it, it just says Hana Guya. Hanim Hagu. When you hear those songs, you get well and you want to get up if you've been sick. Hmm. And that, that song oh. is the one we used for that cedar, Kevin and Cricket. Oh, okay. When yeah. you hear, the, hear those songs, you get well and you just want to get up. And that goo is used for yeah. hog. I'm hog to get up. And then hanagoo, yeah. Yeah. It's just Kiowa is such a beautiful language. And there's so not no one vulgar no word. Not one vulgar word. So beautiful. Let's get it. Yeah, um, Alison, I'll uh um Go back to the recording, and when I upload the recording, I'll do it this weekend, and I'll send those, uh, I'll try to write out those names. I got to switch my little keyboard to the diacritic mark thing. So, anyway, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, yes. So a lot of good stuff. I love the song earlier that David was asking about, and I like that question. Um not being lonely anymore. I like that. I hope that yeah. Oh. Cricket, do you remember that when I when I told you that at the spring thing that spring yes. camp? Oh. <laughs> How do I say I that? <laughs> Old time. <laughs> yeah. I just got lonesome for cricket. <laughs> uh, but I got lonesome for all of y'all. So I'm always glad when I can see y'all when we see, you know, like we saw Courtney the other day and it was like 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. That, you know, oh, go ahead. I was going to say that's a, the beautiful part of being old, being 94, is that you get to meet so many uh, wonderful young people that, um, that I've met through this program that I would not have been, I don't know who they were, but get to know them better and, and, and so I appreciate that. I appreciate all of you who come week after week. It would be your busy lives. And so I just want to encourage you to keep it up. Because uh, we were just talking with Dane. Where, uh, all the elders are going fast. So it's a lot of things you needed. He was talking about translating something I said well you have to do it everything is urgent when it comes to Kiowa because our people are going and so I'm grateful that I'm still able to just meet all of you yeah they want to book all day yeah yes oh it's uh, and on our students the, to the ones that are not here with you all of you we got the pick of the we got a pick of the whole crop all of you a lot of polish a lot of memories a lot of you show it all the time i'm so proud of you no i was thinking our elders they i've heard oh you got muted <laughs> <laughs> is that better oh okay i don't know i almost dropped my phone on my my boy's head and i <laughs> grabbed it right quick and i think my finger hit a button <laughs> but um i think that's how the elders feel you know they they get lonesome for the elders that they had and they just all kind of get lonesome for each other at least that's what i've i've heard and them them saying stuff and um I kind of feel like of course you know I'm not an elder or anything and not even close to it but I kind of feel like that's kind of how I kind of feel like that's how I feel like we are you know the younger ones that's how I feel I I think that that's probably what they felt or they've you know when they got lonesome for each other Aww. and I, I didn't really, I never had that before. I never felt that way before about people that, you know, I never realized it. I never noticed it <laughs> until it, you know, I'll go get it. But I kind of think I equivocate or if I just made up a word, I mean, I think it's the equivalent of that, you know, it's just an early stage of it, you know, getting lonesome for the ones that you've spoken your language with, or you've tried to learn how to speak your language with, and you've, there's a lot of ups and downs we've been through and uh, learning, discovering and everything. And we've, and, and also we've been through a lot as a young group, um, especially the ones that were there from the early parts. We, we've seen a lot and we've, we've gone through the, the deaths of those, you know, our mentors yeah. different things like that and it, it, it's just that life that's happened that we've all been through together and so I kind of feel like that's maybe what the elders feel or or felt you know even some time ago when their language when our language started dying slowly or not dying but you know was going to sleep <laughs> um, they started to feel that you know and and so they crave it. They crave one another's, um, uh, what's that word? Companionship and um, just just each other's company kind of, you know. So I don't know. Just noticed it about myself. 
Aww. Yeah, George said he's over here in the other corner of the room with the babies, and he said just being connected through the language. So. <laughs> Not all. <clears throat> Nine sisters, and I'm the last one. Mm -hmm. Just Dolores and I and Velma. Martha, they're the youngsters, though, too. <laughs> but do y'all have them? We have them all. Oh, get I get. Um. Well, it is almost nine o'clock. <laughs> so, it this was an awesome discussion. Um, before we close up, does anyone else have any other questions or comments? Um, can I uh ask for whomever prays? Um, we've had some. Kids having real hard times. I think at our school, um, one lost a mother, and uh, last week, and another one uh, tried to hang himself. And uh, um, I think I've noticed since COVID, um, some people are coming out of it, but some people, um, I have gotten anxiety, and they keep going further and further into them themselves and not knowing why they're not coming out of it. And um, so we have some kids that are having a hard time and uh, all over, I've noticed it all over, but working in my school district, um, I just worry about our kids, um, everybody, but um, you know, young people before they've even gotten to, got their lives going. And so um, I just want whomever prays to, you know, think about that in our prayers. And because I know prayer helps and I really want, uh, I want to help our kids. So uh, if we can keep, think about that in, um, as we pray tonight. Oh, yes. Oh, cricket. Um, well, any, any other questions or comments for anyone? All right. Uh, let's go ahead and do our closing prayer. Um, let's see. We had Grandma D open us, uh, Grandma Dorothy. It ought say. Yeah. I hope. Doggy. Beg your doggy. I hope I don't talk. Hey, you're to hide ya. Huh. Go a comba. On the own, they don't me. I get tired. I get bit tired. I get tired. Tired. Dog. I am dog. Bit tired. Bone hair. The bull come. The tired. Old. Hot. Get on. Get on. Hunde. I get the the boy. Hot. Till. I over. The am the game. The am pedo. It take pedo. And I get her, they the tide Hot yet on get her on the tide old. I'm dicky, don't say it. I go in high get her. On get they up, he got big, you don't get they in high get her. Dog aim do. Don't utter a call. I hope I don't eager. I get it. Yakoi gugu, to gudo it mohema. Be tied o de tego. Toba do a no be Dilorska. Ink a bit gum. Velma. Martha. D. 
ordain Theta Thai Dodi. Thai get the Thai Badam de Thor Nigger. Nigger eat it all sort of a hoody but ho. I get Thai Bad. Can he go? I get Thai Hatha. I'm Pedro. I eat con Pedro. A chat. Oh. 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 Thank you. What a what a blessed evening. Oh. Oh. Huh. They owned it, about son. It was so good. I'm so glad you all came and it was good. On day, on day. I'm oi bono bon. It was good to see you all again. Oh. Don't forget, I think the cedaring is Saturday. Okay. Out of Indian City. Oh. Oh. That's okay. right. Watch the paper, I guess. It's more reliable than the these. Okay. <laughs> afternoon though when it is okay oh oh <clears throat> awesome all right uh hey is is that for everybody or just one person yeah. go up on the bay Bay, yeah. yeah. for everybody. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's on that chart. Remember we talked about it. Yeah. Okay. The accent's different. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> Sleep, <laughs> good. Sleep, Sleep good, everybody. Bay code oh. name. <laughs> have a fun week. Have a good uh, homecoming week at class, Julia. <laughs> Oh, uh, we will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's busy. It's a crazy busy week. They're, the calls are all decorated with fairy tale things and princess things and Shrek things. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> it's cute. That's, That's awesome. their theme. <laughs> so, okay. Have a good night. Hey, good night. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Oh.